Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, I will show you a quick tip for using the SimReef integration with the new A320 V2 from Asobo and Microsoft, which has been available since a few days. So what's really important is that the system has multiple integration options. First of all, it's with the Electrolink flyback, which can load the flight plan, but also the OFP uh, and other, some other nice things like the payload. So what you need to do is you need to set up your SimBrief account. However, there's a small gotcha, which I will show you uh, right now. So what you need to do is if you go to SimBrief in the portal, right? This is, the dash, this is my dashboard. You can go into account settings and you will note here the uh, username, but also you note the pilot ID. Pilot ID is kind of critical because the pilot ID is the one which you should use uh, in a flight simulator. Else it won't work, you will get kind of weird errors. It says, okay, hey, uh, I can't download the data, etc., without any clear error. It would be nicer if they would have said, okay, hey, incorrect username. Uh, and if you enter the correct details, you can see that it loaded the data. The other thing which is really important is you do that you configure the right uh, aircraft. And I'm also showing that. Well, I'll show you the tool I'm using to record these videos. Right, so OBS really a tool which I really highly recommend you to use. So in this case, we're going to edit flight plan. And the thing which you need to make sure is that you select the A20N-A320-251-N. And then you can either select the default one or you could select the Enibuild MF MSFS A320V2, which is the one which is created by uh, Simbrief. Uh, this gives over a kind of more accurate data, right? So once you've done that, you can click generate and then it will uh, be available in Flight Simulator. If you, for some reason, selected the incorrect aircraft, it will also tell you that you selected the incorrect one. Uh, so now it generated all the information. So it has a flight number uh, and all the rest of the stuff. I can go to the uh, OFP, which has also been loaded. And if I go to the uh, payload, I can simply enter this. You can see that the dots are now being moved. You can click apply and then you can either select instant if you want to do it instantly, fast, up to five minutes or realistic and that can take up to 40 minutes. And you can see everything has been populated here. So that's cool, right? So that's one part. Now the second part is over here in the MCDU. So if you go to the MCDU, you can go to the ATSU and inside there you will also find the pilot ID. So you need to enter it using the digits over here. And once you've done that, you can go back to the uh, previous menu and you can check the uh, OI status. It won't show much here, uh, so that's good. And then you can click return, return, or you can click the init button, which is, I would say, much easier. Once you've done that, you see the init request option over here. So if you press this option, it will go again back to, uh, say, SimBrief and load the data. However, what you see is that it doesn't load the uh, flight number as well as the cost index. So that's something which you need to get back from, in this case, the OFP, right? Because the OFP uh, tells you the information or you can go to the load sheet. So what the, were the values which we're looking for? The cost index and the flight number. So let's go back. Oh, <laughs> kind of lost, zooming in too much. So you can go to the uh, OFP. That's where you find the information. Uh, Let's have a look. Where can we find it? Of course, I'm always looking over it as we are recording this video. Um, here we've got the flight number, Genio, which is the flight number, which you, know, you can also find over here, right? In the OFP. Uh, that's the flight number. So let's uh, enter it uh, using the uh, system over here, Genio. And then um, press the option over here. And then you can go and look up the cost index. The cost index is always referred to CI and can be found over here, right? If on the first page already of the uh, OFP, you will find in this case it's 40. So let's enter the value and then we're, uh, let's say, good to go with this page. As you can see that everything has now been populated. Uh, you can, of course, go to the next page if you want, if there's a next page uh, and if it's allowed. But in this case, it's not allowed. You can see that the rest of the information has already been, I would say, aligned, right? Which is good. Uh, so that then the next step would be to go to the uh, perf uh, values 
and the perf values, uh, you can see that you need to enter them uh, because they are not entered automatically. So that's also something which you need, can use uh, using this system, right? So you can go to the takeoff, then you can set up the right uh, runway. If you press the sync option, the nice thing is that it will also get the wind, the temperature, as well as the altimeter, and then you can define the weight, and the weight can be found uh, over here, right? So if we look at the uh, weight, where is it? Who sees it? A lot of weight, as you can see. So we've got the max weight, we've got the load sheet weight, uh, so we can enter a value. So in this case, the uh, fuel weight and a uh, three and a zero fuel weight. So let's enter that one uh, because I think that that's one. That's the correct one. But again, I'm not 100% sure, so let's enter it and then let's see what happens. Uh, so uh, five zero. Uh, Five zero. Was it five zero? Was it right? Was it uh, five zero? Yeah, that's. Whoa, click button. And then you can set up the flaps, the air conditioning, uh, or the air condition, uh, the uh, anti ice if it's on, uh, force that you go, and then you can press calculate. And it should calculate the option for you. If you entered an incorrect value, which I likely did, because else it would have calculated it for me, then it would show the information over here. So let's have a look at the payload again. Uh, 6649. And then press calculate. There you saw that it now uh, modified the options. So it says, okay, this is the information, the flex temperature, as well as the V1, the VR, the V2, uh, the MTOE for performance and center of gravity and the THS. And then you can press the send to uh, FMGS. If we did that, right, it should be available here. So let's press the progress of proof button here. And you can see that the values have been populated. And by uh, using this button, you will see that nothing happens, right? So let me... Remove the errors. So what you need to do in this case is enter them manually. Unfortunately, they didn't uh, use the option to copy it and paste it, uh, which I would have expected like the fly-by-wire one. So we've got these values. And as you can see, the flaps, etc., has not been done, right? So we need to have a look at this. So flaps is one and then uh, 0 0.3 up and uh, one slash 0 0.3. Uh, up and then the flex temp was 58 that's correct enter it over here and then we can say uh, two data right so now the two data as well as the takeoff data has been done and we can continue with the next phase and you can go to the other phases right so as you can see Everything has now been, I would say, almost set up, right? Uh, cruise speed has been set up. Uh, all the rest has been set up, which is really cool. And if we go to the flight plan, you can see that it imported the flight plan nicely. Uh, so we can select it. Uh, you can see that the message doesn't go away. So you need to click cl clear in that case. And then you can start off uh, the flight. Again, I'm not sure if this is the correct value. So I do recommend you to have a look at the uh, manual, which I do think contains the correct value. Uh, to, for those who don't know where to find the manual, let me quickly show you. So if you go to uh, flightsimulator.com. Uh, simulator. Oh. And then of course, press the option off. Then what you can do is you can go into the media and there you will find a lot of information. And then you can go to download PDF uh, manuals. And if you scroll down, Besides A or below the A310, you find an A320 V2, which contains both the quick reference card as well as a PDF document, which is 124 pages long. Uh, so you can see that there's a lot of information over here. So if we would go to the uh, probably the uh, weights and limits, we can see the weights and limits of the aircraft. You can see that's also nicely clickable. That makes it I would say easier to would say uh, scroll. Then it will come with some detailed documentation about the lightning, but also about the concept of the aircraft, the electronic flight pack, how you can use it. 
and several other options but the one i was searching for isn't i would say added there right so let me scroll down a bit don't think that they entered it in here because it's really a manual which describes the bit here we've got the walkthrough guide right and that will really take you from zero to hero i would almost say uh, and that will take you to all the things uh, which you need to enter such as the cost index uh, the flight number but also how you enter the uh, sim brief information of course uh, how you can change the uh, load okay, you can switch on the lights so a lot of cool stuff in this 124 pages manual as they mentioned here, you need to enter the uh, zero fuel weight, uh, can be taken from the EFB. And then you will see that the value is over here also, that's 6709, right? That's the view, uh, block view, can also be taken from the space, but it's usually taken from the upper ECAM view on the board FOB. And that's the value which you need to enter here, as it looks like. Although it says 756. 75400, which doesn't make any sense because it's not listed anywhere. But probably, if you know, uh, I would say if you're a pilot, a 20 pilot, let me know which value we should enter because likely I'm not the only one uh, which is a little bit puzzled on which value we need to use. Uh, but again, cool things. So you can find the manual. I will post the link also in the description of this video so you can have a look at it. And then it's time to start uh, your flight with the new A320 V2 from Asobo and Microsoft. Here ends this video where we quickly looked at how to configure the SimBrief integration, but also how to use it in the multiple parts of the aircraft. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.